All right, welcome to week eight. If you're watching this, it's because you were gone at some point and you are in my English 10 class. This week, I get to have you for three days, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We've got a full five-day week. And this week is gonna be kind of, um, we're not starting a new unit quite yet because I'm kind of finalizing that. So this is gonna be kind of a standalone week that will kind of follow into the following weeks, um, but it'll make sense as I explain. So you will have time this week for independent reading time. We are going to start something called an inspiration interview essay. It's something that I did with my juniors and they really liked it. And I think it'll be a good opportunity for you to have fun um, interviewing somebody that is important in your life while also working on a skill that is really necessary when writing essays. And then we are also going to have a grammar lesson. We haven't had one in quite a while, um, but we're going to get back on that train. And then we are going to do something very practical and something that I think will be very fun. So let's get into it. Like I said, you will have some time in class for independent reading on Monday and Friday. Um, something that I need you to do after that is open up a blank Google Doc in your Google Drive. You're going to title it with your first and last name and then inspiration interview essay. And then after you do that, you need to share it with me. If you forgot, that's my email, but it should just, as long as you start typing my last name, it should pop up because you should be doing this from your school email. And then you are going to use the APA format title page link on Canvas to create um, your title page. So all I want you to do is literally copy and paste it so that it looks like this. So that is linked on Canvas. So that's step number one for Monday. Um, now let me tell you what this whole assignment is about. You are going to be conducting an interview with somebody in your life that inspires you, somebody that you look up to, somebody who maybe is a role model to you. And I'm not gonna necessarily limit who that is, but think about like a parent, a coach, a mentor, a sibling, a friend, um, just somebody in your life that is very inspirational to you. Um, and has been for quite some time. So after, uh, well, excuse me, you are gonna be con conducting an interview with this person. And here's a question for you or a question you might be asking, why are we doing this? Well, um, we are going to, it's fun to be able to do this and write about somebody that you care about, but we are going to practice integrating quotes and evidence into your writing. You did have the opportunity to work on this school skill with our persuasive paper that you did first semester, but this time I want it to be a very concentrated effort at just practicing that skill. We're not worrying necessarily about grammar. We're not necessarily worrying about, um, honestly, really much else. It's going to be mostly about integrating quotes, and these are the standards that go along with that. So um, a quick few tips on conducting the interview. Take notes. Don't just ask them the questions and sit there and blink and do nothing. Take notes, whether that's you pulling out your phone and literally making like a voice recording as they're talking, or if you prefer to just write things down as they're speaking. Um, either way, you need to be recording some version of notes. And then please make sure that the person you're interviewing answers all the questions that you have and that they give enough detail. So if they kind of like, give you very quick, short answers, maybe ask them to elaborate a little bit more or give you some more information or repeat a detail because you need to make sure that you have enough information to write. Here are the questions that you will be asking your interviewee. What was a positive and negative experience that you had growing up that largely shaped who you are today? What values in life are important to you? So some ideas, integrity, respect, worth, work ethic, forgiveness, things like that. What is advice or wisdom that you would tell yourself in high school? So them looking back on their high school career, what was what would be some advice that they would share with themselves? And then I want you to come up with a question of your own, which can be something that you come up with. Here are the instructions in terms of requirements. So for regular, because we have honors as well, uh, you are going to write two pages minimum, double space, 12 point font, Times New Roman, and APA format, which we have already done. For honors, you're going to do all those things, but it'll be three pages instead of two. And you are going to ask three more additional questions of your own creation. 
And then I want you to give me a specific paragraph where you explain why you chose to interview the person that you did and explain why you created the questions that you came up with. So things to do on Monday um, or in this week, decide who you're going to interview. That has to happen by the end of the period. You need to come up with the extra questions you need to ask, and then you are going to complete the actual interview by Monday of next week. So this week I'm giving you to get that interview done. Um, I'm telling you at the beginning of the week, so honestly, unless you were gone, you really shouldn't need more time, but I really want us to get rolling on actually writing the essay of this. So you have to get the interview done by Monday of next week, which would be April 4th. Okay, um, the next thing we're gonna do is take some notes. So on your slides, you will see um, spots where there are underlines, but there's nothing on your slide. That's where you need to fill in the blank. So we're gonna talk about integrating evidence, um, passing the mic to your guest speaker. So in terms of evidence, because this paper is more narrative um, and informative, it's not a persuasive paper. It's We're not necessarily gonna call it evidence, but um, we're going to work on integrating quotes and sources is what we should call it. So again, when you see a line, you're going to fill in with what's blank here. So your pieces of textual evidence are your guest speakers that support your essays, claims, your thesis that supports what you're talking about. And to be a great host, you need to introduce your guest speakers by passing the microphone. You can't just simply throw out a quote and expect your essay to flow smoothly. Um, you need to do some introductions and transitions. So to be a great writer and avoid plagiarism, you also need to properly integrate your evidence to show your readers where your words are coming from and where your quotes begin and end. Again, fill in the blanks here, here, and here. Um, if you don't integrate evidence, this is what happens. Things can kind of get awkward and the flow of the paper, the organization just is very choppy and kind of feels like sporadic. Um, things can get confusing if you're not giving signals to your reader as to when you're transitioning, as to when you're introducing somebody, which would be in this case, you're the person that you're interviewing. It can get a little bit confusing as to who's saying what. And then you might accidentally plagiarize. With this, it's not really going to be the case because your only source is the interview that you're conducting. But with something like a persuasive paper, you can easily plagiarize if you do not integrate your evidence properly. So there are three methods that you can use. Intro, quote, blended, and colon. And I'll show you what those mean. For intro, quote, you are giving an introductory phrase and then a full quote. So use this method if you really, really like how they have worded something and you don't want to change that. You want to make it a direct quote. So you do not need to say the text states or the author states. Just get rid of that because that's being redundant. You're going to say what they're going to state anyway, so you just don't need it. It could look something like this. According to Smith, it is essential to introduce your quotes. Introductory phrase, quote. Smith claims, blah, 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 blah. That's literally all that it is. So that is method number one, intro and quote. Number two is blended. That's when you use your words, the quote, and then your words. So it's kind of a your word sandwich. Use this method if there's a particular part of a phrase or a sentence that the person said that you really like and you don't want to change it. Um, but you don't need to necessarily quote the entire quote. Maybe it's a big quote. Maybe it's just too much. Um, you can kind of weave in part of a quote. Uh, and here's an example. Writers agree that blending quotes results in, quote, a more sophisticated essay that allows readers to see the connection between the writer's ideas and sources. And then you could have more words of your own down here. Number three is colon. A complete sentence, colon, and a quote. Introduce the quote with a complete sentence that serves to present the information that follows in the quote. So here's an example. Smith offers her advice for writing a successful rough draft, colon, and then here's the direct quote. So those are three methods as to how you can integrate your evidence. Notice patterns, author, verb, comma, parentheses. Smith, that's the author, verb, claims, states, whatever, asserts, the comma right here, and then parentheses. Um, at the end, after the quote. With con condensing quotes, the key is that your direct quotes should really be no longer than three sentences or they should be shorter. Anything more than that is just too much of somebody else and not enough of you. Um, so here are two examples to kind of give you an idea as to what that looks like. 
If you want to use an ellipsis, you can because that would show that you're omitting, omitting part of the quote, um, but you're not necessarily altering the meaning in any way. So these are two examples for you. And then vary your verbs. Don't just say, she said, she said, she said over and over and over again. Um, if you look at these verbs, confirming something and highlighting something are two different things. Saying that she analyzed versus she proposed, those are two different actions. So vary your verbs to kind of make a more specific um, way of communicating how your interview, interview person communicated. And then rule of thumb, if you can't say it better, put it in your own words, or if you can say it better, put it in your own words by paraphrasing or summarizing. Um, if it, the quote is just very specific, there's stats, it's very technical or descriptive, you can always directly quote it. So that's kind of the rule of thumb. So those are some notes for you. Um, next is our grammar lesson. You are going to watch this video, What Do All Languages Have in Common? Um, this grammar lesson isn't necessarily gonna be about commas or parentheses or something very specific like punctuation, it's going to be kind of more ethereal. So you're going to answer these questions. Noam Chomsky talks about his theory of universal grammar. You're going to tell me what that is. You're going to describe the two components of universal grammar and then describe what change he made to his theory when they talk about principles and parameters in the video. And then next, um, I have a little bit of a story <laughs> to lead into what we're doing. So I have wanted to give you something very practical. Um, we looked at resume writing earlier in the year. We did email etiquette a couple weeks ago. And now I want to look at something that's kind of, I would say, more important than both of those things, really, because it's big. It's a big picture stuff. So quick story. This is just a couple pictures of me when I was your age. Um, I had that side part going strong. I was 16, 17, 18 in these pictures. Um, when I was your age, when I was in high school, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do after high school was over. I had a lot of friends that were like, oh, I kind of know, I'm kind of thinking about this or this. Or I had some friends that were like, I have known that I've wanted to be a nurse since I was in sixth grade. And that was not the case for me. I really just didn't know. Um, I knew things that like hobbies and activities and sports, I knew those things that were interesting to me, but I didn't know anything in terms of like what career path would be even remotely interesting enough for me to like start to pursue at that age. And my teachers uh, didn't really help me with that at all. I never had a teacher that gave me words of wisdom. I never had a teacher that said, here are some options to look at. So I kind of want to do that for you because it would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of money um, if I had someone who had done that. So this is something that we're going to start this week and kind of carry on into next week. We are going to do some career exploration and personality assessment stuff. So today, um, today meaning Wednesday, you're going to take a personality test and I'm going to show you how that works. And then on Friday, you're going to fill out a Google form to give me some insight as to career and college exploration stuff. And then we'll kind of revisit all of this next week. So really quick, before we take this personality test, I want to give you my big sister speech. Um, in reality, I'm like nine, 10 years older than you. So I could be your big sister, <laughs> even though I'm your teacher. So here are some things I want you to think about before we take this personality test. Number one, personality tests to me, are meant to be a helpful tool for self-reflection. What they are not meant to do is define you entirely and put you in a box. I think sometimes we get really carried away with personality tests or I'm a Sagittarius or a Taurus or whatever. We get carried away with that stuff and we let it put us into a box and make it so that we can't do anything or believe anything or act a certain way that's outside of that box. Um, and that's just not true to how real life is because real life is not so black and white, it's not so put into a box. So take these things with a grain of salt. Um, don't let it define you entirely. You're going to grow and change with time, which is a good thing. Um, and I'll give you an example of that in a second. And then when you are taking this test, take your time and answer the questions honestly, because you're gonna be able to get the most out of it if you answer it honestly. Sometimes these questions are a little bit uncomfortable, like, talking about the fact that maybe you're a procrastinator and that's something that you're ashamed of. I don't know. 
Um, but you need to be able to answer this honestly. It's not what do you wish you were like? It's what are you to the best of your ability? Answer those questions of how you are right now. Um, so it's linked here in the slides, but it's also going to be linked in Canvas. And I'm going to show you how to access that. After you take the test, you are going to fill in this information here. So up here, you're going to give the five letter personality code. Right here, you're going to type the name, which I'll show you. Um, after reviewing the five letter code, you're going to scroll down and click start reading to look at the introduction of that type and kind of summarize what your type, your personality type is here. Um, right here, you are going to scroll down to celebrities and characters and just jot down a couple that are listed. First impressions, how accurate is this? Tell me if you think it's accurate, if you think it's like super far off. Um, strengths, it's going to tell you your strengths and weaknesses. So you're going to kind of summarize that, also your weaknesses. And then on this side, you're going to talk, go to the friends section, career paths. So you'll kind of follow along on the website and I'll show you what this looks like. So I retook the test. I took this test a very long time ago, um, but I retook it. And this is what it looks like when you finish the test. So I am a protagonist. That's the um, personality name type, which would be right here. My letter, five code letter is E-N-F-J, and then I have a T. So I would put that right here in the salmon colored box. So if you scroll down, it's got the introduction, strength and weaknesses, romantic relationships, friendships, parenthood, career paths, workplace habits, conclusion, and then the premium stuff you can ignore because that is where they make you pay money. So to give you an idea of what to look at, um, protagonists, ENFJs, feel called to serve a greater purpose in life. Thoughtful and idealistic, these personality types strive to have a positive impact on other people and the world around them. They are rarely shy away from an opportunity to do the right thing, even when it is doing even when doing so is far from easy if you look on the right it'll tell you kind of some other things very specific to me in the test results that i got so i feel this is pretty accurate i am basically down the middle in terms of extrovert introvert i'm slightly more extroverted than i am introverted but it kind of just depends on the day really i'm more 63 percent more intuitive than i am observant 71 percent more feeling than thinking which is for sure judging and prospecting and as you notice as you go down you can like click on a few of these things i am more turbulent than assertive um, if you scroll down it's going to give you some more information about your type and kind of like what to expect from somebody with a personality type like this um, go to strength and weaknesses um, i'm receptive i'm reliable i'm passionate i'm altruistic charismatic my weaknesses, unrealistic, overly idealistic, condescending, intense, over, overly empathetic. And again, like I said, please do not let your test results put you into a box and make you think that this is how you will be forever and ever and that you can't act or be a certain way outside of this because that's just not true. I can go and look at romantic relationships, like how do I interact with people in that type of relationship? Scroll down to friendships. How does my personality type kind of affect my friendships, parenthood in terms of starting a family. What does that typically look like? Scroll down to career paths, which is something I really want us to focus on. Um, they find fulfillment in doing what others love or find fulfillment in doing what they love most, helping other people, earning their place, blah, 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 finding deeper issues. social skills, intelligence, so you can kind of read overview, workplace habits, things that I would typically do while working. And then the conclusion. So this is just to give you an overview as to what this looks like. Um, it's pretty cool, pretty interesting. If you Let's see, go back. Again, you were going to fill out and go to the different aspects here to fill out your slide. So weaknesses, strengths, all of that. And then we're going to talk about this later. So please save this information. When you finish the test, it'll ask you if you want to save your results. And you can do that by just typing in your email and it'll like send all that information to you. Um, this would be for third or sorry, Friday. We'll have some independent reading time. 
And then we're going to talk about career exploration. So I have another big sister speech for you. A couple things. We're going to look at careers because like I said, when I was in high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Some of you are maybe in that exact boat. Some of you might be in a different situation entirely, and that's totally fine. But I think this is going to benefit us all no matter what. Here's my speech. Your path after high school will not and should not be cookie cutter. And what I mean by that is you are not going to have the same exact path as everybody else outside of high school after high school's over. Even if you and all of your best friends decide to go to college or decide not to, your life is not going to be the same as anybody else's because you are a unique individual. And that's a good thing. It's a very good thing. You can and will change your mind, whether that means after high school, you're like, mm, I don't know about college. I was planning on it, but now I don't think so. Or mm, I'm in college and I was thinking about this major, but now I'm not so sure. It's okay to change your mind. You will have time to do so. Um, and that's perfectly normal. Everybody does it. It might take you longer or quicker. Like it might surprise you how long or quick it'll take you to figure out what you want to do. For me, um, I would say I was kind of surprised at how quick it took me after high school to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, for some people, it doesn't seem like it's very quick. Sometimes it takes a long time. So either way, just be prepared to be surprised. This is so important. Job shadowing is the easiest, cheapest, and quickest way to figure out if something is meant for you. That's a couple of reasons. One, um, it doesn't take that long. You could job shadow for one day, for two hours, it's up to you. Um, you could choose to do it periodically. You could choose to do it just one time forever and ever. Uh, it gives you a very good picture of a day in the life, which is the part that I think is most critical to see with any career option, because sometimes we can have this romanticized idea as to what a career is gonna be like, but then we don't know what the day-to-day -day stuff is like. And then lastly, please do not put too much pressure on yourself. I did this. I put way too much pressure on myself because I felt like I needed to have a plan in place. I needed to figure out what I wanted to do because everybody else apparently had a plan. And I stressed myself out way too much. So please don't do that to you. It's not good. So what you're going to do is fill out this Google form. It's also linked on Canvas. This is going to help me with trying to assess um, kind of where you're at, what you're thinking. My ultimate goal, honestly, is to get like guest speakers to come in, kind of like um, career day when you're in elementary school and you have the parents come in and they talk about their jobs. That's kind of what I want to do is get people to come in or if not that, at least like find videos and give you a sense of what is out there, what options are available to you and to learn because sometimes you could be like me and go, yeah, I know what a lawyer is. They do, do stuff in court, but like, what does that actually mean? You know? So I want to try to help you with that. So please fill this out. And then this next assignment or activity is going to be something that's in class. So if you're gone, um, just come talk to me. We're going to essentially be looking at an example of an essay that one of my juniors wrote, and you're going to kind of determine why it's an example of a good interview essay. And that is all I have. If you have any questions, please let me know.